Hello everyone, <clears throat> this is Trisha from Maine at Whispering Pines Micro Farm. Um, so I have gotten a few requests um, in the past and I just got another one yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and do a video about just basic care of um, a lion head, um, even if it's just as a pet. Um, I get a lot of questions on my uh, Facebook page, uh, Whispering Pines Micro Farm, in regards to feeding, um, diet, and grooming. And also uh, housing questions like what is better wire or solid bottom so I'm going to cover those basics today um, and what you're seeing in front of you right now is basically um, a daily diet of uh, lion head here at whispering pines um, and it can vary but basically um, starting out with um, is uh, pellets as you can see here um, these are 18% I per personally feed pullin um, grain which is a regional um, to us here in Maine um, it's a New England uh, milled uh, grain so um, I like that I can easily get it at multiple places so I never have to worry about transitioning them to another food and also um, in my it works for my rabbits um, I'm also feeding a herd versus feeding um, just a pet bunny so you can do a lot of different things if you're just feeding a pet bunny so the most important thing um, that I tell people when they uh, get a rabbit from me as a pet to choose a food that you have uh, regular access to um, bunnies do not do well with switching up their diet so it's very important that you have regular access to the food okay so this is just oats these are old-fashioned oats just like you would make for breakfast oatmeal for breakfast now they're not the quick oats um, keep that in mind so they're old-fashioned still oats. so this is more of a top dressing or a treat um, and oh, the food is a half a cup by the way sorry that's a half a cup so this is um, this is a full tea uh, tablespoon um, however they don't need that much um, a half a tablespoon would be fine and again this is just more for a treat it doesn't need to be a daily part of their diet um, but if you're trying to get them to uh, transition um, at, when you get them home I always include a starter kit and these are all the things that I include in it it's because that's what they're used to here um, and it's also just good to uh, give them as a little treat so that you can um, get them used to you. They can nibble it out of your the palm of your hand um, if you're trying to train them for something um, Something like that half a tablespoon um, would be plenty and then also black oil sunflower seed Now this is the same black oil sunflower seed. Um, it's often recall uh, referred to as boss b-o-s-s -S, um, In the rabbit world. So if you see someone typing boss, that is what that is black oil sunflower seed This is the same that you would buy to feed the birds in the winter. Um, I buy a 50 pound bag from my feed store and that is exactly what it is um, but again I'm feeding a herd so that wouldn't be necessary for most people who are just having a pet um, and again half a tablespoon now I like to mix this in with the pellet um, black oil sunflower seed uh, will help with a shiny coat um, just from the natural oils from it however it's very very important to understand the following black oil sunflower seed is a hot feed so in the if the in the summertime if your bunny is not in air condition um, do not feed um, boss to them um, because it will uh, create a higher interior uh, internal sorry internal temperature for them uh, so that is great for winter time um, but not in the uh, summertime unless they are in the AC in the house with you um, and then this is a little uh, thing that I use it's just shredded wheat this is regular shredded wheat um, that you get in the cereal aisle um, it's perfect for uh, when you're training them or grooming them um, just to give them a little something a little nibble on this is just your basic generic um, shredded wheat and it's just a good little treat to, for training purposes so this is not part of their daily diet this is just something that I offer um, when I'm doing working with them um, or trimming nails or uh, grooming or something like that and then last but not least we have hay now um, hay quality is important um, this I don't know if you can tell this is a really really great I don't know if it's gonna show through the camera um, wonderful hay that I just got it's a first cut um, it's very it has a lot of green in it. it it's considered a horse quality hay so if you're looking for a hay and you have the opportunity to be able to purchase from a farm 
um, it, or you just or you're putting it out there hey I need hay make sure you use the words horse quality because it does mean um, something different and the farmers will know what you're talking about um, as well otherwise if you're just getting it at a uh, pet stop a pet stop or a pet uh, supply type place um, they have orchard hay uh, Timothy hay um, those are those are both uh, great uh, for the bunnies as well. Again, it's important to have access to something, and the bunny should have unlimited hay. They should always have availability to hay. It keeps everything moving through their digestive system. Um, one of the things that um, will um, unfortunately kill a bunny faster than anything is um, a digestive issue. So if your bunny stops eating for any reason, it is definitely cause for alarm. Um, a bunny can be gone in 24 hours from not eating um, if something is wrong with them and that's one of the first signs um, is their lack of appetite and that is also why I like to use something like the shredded wheat as a treat because if I have a bunny that I am suspicious of not maybe not feeling well and I offer them one of these and they don't take it I know I'm in trouble because typically this is like crack for bunnies um, and they will take this and if I can at least get them to nibble on this I know that um, that you know they're going to be okay so um, that is the basic diet of the bunny um, for those who are asking now I'm gonna go get a, a couple bunnies to show you so we'll start talking about grooming and caging okay so one of the questions that are is frequently asked has to do with grooming of a lion head so here are two um, lion are a lion head and a Polish so my um, and they're almost the Polish is a little bit younger um, by a couple weeks here um, my question always is um, what what is too much for somebody when someone's like oh is it a lot of grooming well what's a lot to you personally because to me a lion head doesn't require a lot of grooming because I see my friends grooming their angoras okay and so for me that's a lot of grooming um, but however you can clearly see that if you were to buy a Polish for a pet compared to a lion head for a pet that you're going to have a little bit of more grooming responsibility now this little girl is a junior um, lion head she's um, a show quality baby she's actually going to Rhode Island to her new owner to be shown um, in just a week or so um, and she is what what I call the junior phase which is the most um, for me to me uh, the most time that grooming is most important once they shed out of their baby fuzz um, and they shed their saddle and their face clears out um, there really isn't a lot of grooming required um, they do most of the work themselves. but there is a period of time and that period of time is typically when someone would be bringing home um, their new pet uh, pet lion head um, if they got uh, you know a baby from a breeder and it's not already a grown grown lion head so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this little chocolate baby back I just wanted to show you for a comparison because obviously you know this little mama's here is not going to require anything um, except occasionally uh, trimming of a nail and making sure the ears might be wiped out or something once in a while compared to little miss fufu here who you know does have a little bit more going on but again the question really is a personal question what's a lot for you okay so I am going to show you um, how to groom this little mama's up um, I did have her out to groom yesterday and I started to and then I realized oh I'm going to do this video so I stopped so um, I didn't get very far with her um, I have been neglectful over about a week um, because I've been busy with work and kids and whatnot um, so even going a while without grooming she's still in really great shape um, I'm not sure if everybody knows this or not um, if you're getting if you, you know this is for for someone with a pet not an experienced breeder obviously but rabbits actually clean themselves 100% every day so they wash themselves from front to back in every little corner every single day um, they're actually a very fastidious and clean animal so um, you know but um, and we'll talk about caging in an environment um, and how that affects that um, after we're done grooming um, grooming her um, I don't know what her name's going to be I should have asked Nathan what he wanted to name her um, I just call them all mamas all the little girls are little mamas until they get a name for me um, isn't the Polish adorable these are my sons my son raises and shows Polish and he loves the chocolate babies and this one is just super super sweet um, so I'm gonna go put her back um, and um, I'll be right back to uh, start grooming um, little Miss Fufu here hold on just one moment okay so I'm back all right so my grooming tool of choice the primary tool that I use when grooming um, my lion heads is this comb here 
Um, it's an, I believe it's called Oster. I got it at Walmart. It came with us in a set with this and um, this little one as well, um, which I occasionally use, but very, very rarely. Um, and and um, so this is my go-to comb. I just like, I like the wooden handle, but I like the spacing and um, the quality the quality of it as well um, and the second grooming tool that I will sometimes use um, is this and this is actually I think it was in the cat aisle um, but I like it because um, I'm a little bit of a gadget girl and it does this and you can pull the fur off which I'll show you in a minute so basically for um, little mamas here when a, a junior um, is obviously going to be shedding out its face Okay, so um, that's what I'm waiting for here. Now, I'm very, very gentle, and I'm also very gentle around the eye. You don't want to poke them in the eye, um, but you have to make sure that their fur is not sticking and getting any um, ickies or crusties. So I always do this, and it also helps her to know. Obviously, she's used to this. Um, I, groom, I groom my babies, you know, as frequently as I possibly can. She's not freaking out. She's not being scared, as you can clearly see. Um, and I just go in there and I get that and I, and I brush it very, very gently. She has no snarls on her face, um, which is great. So then I move on to the bib. Now, my my lion heads, typically, um, some of them don't like me doing the bib. So here's the technique that I use. And please rest assured, this is not hurting them in any way, shape, or form. I'm not holding them by the ears, okay? But I do come up here and I grab some fur and I just kind of pull them back. Now, I'm not holding um, them by the ears when I do this. I'm just pulling their head up a little bit, and I'm really pushing a little bit on the back, and it's just keeping them keeping them up, and I'm just barely holding onto their ear. I'm not reaching and grabbing them. If, if they were hurt, they would struggle, um, and she's not struggling, and she'd also squeal if you've ever heard of her pet buddy. But this just lets me get under here and get the bib um, cleaned out, because we don't want any snarls, and I just quickly do it. And I'm not gonna, you know, fight with her over it, um, but just to quickly get that part done and then I just work around the bunny So this part's all going to shed out and you can see clearly how it's starting to shed out So I'm just going to use my comb and get the um, Whatever wants to come out easily and she is um, Shedding out pretty good here, which she's right on time. Um, I'd have to look up her birthday um, but she's my, uh, the lines that I um, uh, Purchased to begin with are slow shedders um, that was done on purpose when you're showing, um, what happens typically is if you have a fast shedding bunny that sheds out quickly, they typically um, don't get those, that mane back. And it has nothing to do with being a single mane or a double mane. Um, all my bunnies are double mane, but that does not guarantee um, that they're going to get a fabulous senior mane um, after they molt out the first, the junior mane. So bunnies do molt out annually. Um, weather plays a part, of course. Um, you know, and age plays a part. There's a lot of different factors. Um, temperatures, um, there's a term called blow their coat. Um, sometimes just going for a ride in the car to a show, um, the temperature change from the car um, can blow their coat. Um, so there's all kinds of things that you have to take into consideration. Um, but you can see, I mean, that wasn't a lot that came out um, at all. And I'm just, I'm not being aggressive at all. I'm not over grooming. Um, there's no need to over groom uh, whether you have a pet or a show animal if it's good quality it's going to shed in due time um, so there's no plucking or pulling or cutting or over grooming needed um, at all just you have to be patient with this breed um, and if you're not a patient person this isn't the breed for you um, and you know you just have to learn to, to wait on the babies so this is how I typically do it and I'm not pulling hard I'm just letting the comb do its work I will you know go in underneath and just gently see if anything wants to come out because you don't want anything dead hanging in there because that's how you get the snarlies so this part is pretty easy and as you can see she's shedding out beautifully now here's where the tricky part comes in um, that I personally find is right here behind the ears let me see if I'm making sure you guys can see this clearly here so what I find is there's going to be snarls they're going to be behind here and she does have a couple snarls so I'm going to work those out and I want to be very very careful because she is going to be a show bunny so I don't want to lose any of her wool back here um, or of her mane um, because that could affect the the look and the quality um, of her being on the table so she's probably going to get aggravated but here is a snarl I don't know if everyone can see that so I'm going to take my comb and I'm just going to pick at it because and I'm holding the base of it because I don't want to actually pull any wool out while I'm picking at it 
Um, cause we're going to, this is called saving the mane. Um, this is what I call it. And I have a couple other breeder, um, breeders that, you know, they'll say, Oh, she had a big snarl. I'm like, did you save the mane? And yes, I saved it. So you have to just be careful. Now this isn't typical when they get to be seniors and they have a good mane. It's just a different consistency, um, than the baby, uh, the baby fuzz, I call it the foo foo baby fuzz. I don't know if there's a technical name for this or not, but, um, basically, but it just snarls much easier. Um, so you do have to stay on top of it. It during those first few months um, until they molt out and get into that senior uh, senior um, uh, mane that comes in but as you can see um, it, you know it is coming out very carefully um, easily it's not um, ripping out so she's gonna be fine sorry Nathan um, I should have gotten this done sooner Nathan is the new owner of this beautiful little girl um, and um, I just want to make sure that she's in tip-top shape for him to put on the show table as soon as he's ready to do so. Uh, so we are going to be able to save um, save the mane. Um, we're not going to be ripping out any snarls today. She has another little one, but it's very savable. It's not really bad. I mean, I've seen them really bad before. Um, if it's a brood and I haven't really gotten in there um, time-wise, I'll just snip them out because if they're not going on the show table, then... Um, you know, I, I have to focus my time on the show bunnies uh, more so um, than the brood, brood ones. So, and typically um, a doe will is going to rip it all out for her baby's nest anyway. Um, so um, that's that's just the reality of it. But I do need to spend, uh, you need to spend more time if you're doing a show baby or if you just have it as a pet and you want her to look fabulously gorgeous all the time, you know, this would be part of it. And again, if I had spent, you know, if I had come out here and was doing it on a more routine or if she was my pet bunny in the house, this would have gotten done sooner and there would be no snarls here. So that's just my bad. Um, and you know not having the schedule that I would like to have to be able to do, to do it. But there you go. I mean, it's all saved now. Um, there's no more snarl and she is just a gorgeous gorgeous little mama and as you can see how calm and nice she is as she's letting me do this um, you know she like I said she is used to it um, I can pretty much pick my show babies out of the litter pretty young and I just make sure that I um, give them the attention um, in time because I want them to be nice and calm like this um, for me and or for someone else who is going to wind up with her or him in the end um, you know I can't keep them all unfortunately um, and you can only show so many at a time. Um, you know, there's only so much time in a day. So um, we just want to make sure that, that, you know, they're used to it. So um, she's looking really, really great considering that she hasn't been groomed um, for a good week. Um, but this is basically what you're going to be dealing with. If you purchase a really good quality baby and she has lots of mane, um, then this is, this is the extent of it. And again, that wouldn't have been even the case. It wouldn't have even taken that long if... Um, here, mamas. If um, if I had been out here when I was supposed to, well, yes, yes, good girls, good mamas. So that's her little treat for um, letting me uh, do all that. And um, now I could like continue to groom her for a little while here, <clears throat> but that's just me um, with my um, my own issues. Um, she's actually perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, so that's basically it for the grooming. Now, if that's considered a lot for you, then you know, then this is not the bunny for you. Um, or you know, if you're talking to a breeder and they have a pet quality, you can talk to them about the the main situation on that particular bunny, because there are a lot of you know pet lion heads out there that are not going to have this much density in their mane. So you wouldn't have to um, deal with that at all um, if that's if that's the case. So, um, and it, again, it has nothing to do with being single main or double main. That's a whole different video. Um, so you can watch my videos on YouTube under Whispering Pines Micro Farm um, to learn more about um, things like that. So this is about the extent of it. Now for me, um, I don't do nails by myself. I'm very, very fortunate that my husband actually holds the bunnies for me while I do the nails. So um, I don't know if she's going to let me see, show you. I mean, we just did her nails, so there's not going to be anything do, to do. Uh, basically, but if you okay, she's not gonna like this You just barely barely take the tip off um, She still has what I call baby nails as well, but this is what I use um, Where's my these are also in the kitty cat aisle um, This is what I use to do nails for my whole herd um, and you just literally just take a little the little tip off um, And you know you can see the little white tips. I don't know if she's gonna let me do it 
Um, one way to do this is to hold them upside down in your lap with their head facing your chest. Um, they go into a little bit of a stasis and get them calmed down. Maybe give them a treat um, if they want. She's not interested in the shredded wheat today. It's hot here too. That always plays a part. Um, and she's already had her food for the day. You know what the shredded wheat? So, um, so anyway, that's pretty much the extent. Hello, mamas. Come here. Of the grooming. And as you can see, she was very, very fine with it. Now, if you're having a pet bunny, one thing we'll talk about is the bum bum area. Okay? So, here, this is what I say. And other people, have, of course, can have their own opinions on whatever they want to have an opinion on. I raise my lion heads out on wire. Um, because they do have, um, you know, furry bum bums, and um, you know, they you don't want them sitting in, in, um, in poo or or urine that could be on the hay. Um, you can litter box train them very very easily. So if you want it all in one section, that's great, um, and that way you can just toss it into your garden, your flower garden, toss it on your lawn. Um, it's instant um, satisfaction. You don't have to compost them. Um, bunny bunny berries is what we call them here um, so that is um, an option um, use pine pellets do not use kitty litter under any circumstances also if you do choose to do a solid bottom with shavings do not use any cedar shavings um, the oils in it um, um, and just can cause respiratory issues and there's just other issues kitty litter is uh, dusty it can cause respiratory issues so you do not use kitty litter but in the kitty litter aisle there is something called pine pellets um, and um, that is the appropriate thing to use for uh, for the bunny. Now you can see right there where um, the eye, the fur was sticking to her eye a little bit. So here's what I do: if she were a pet bunny, and I have done this for my pet bunnies before, I would actually trim around her eye um, with with these same uh, clippers. Um, and because I don't want that to continue happen. No, because she's a show bunny, I'm waiting for her face to shed out. Um, you know, I'm not going to do that all to her in any way, shape, or form, okay? Now, when it comes to bum bums, this is what I typically do, and I will also do this for, uh, for also for um, pet bunnies going to new homes, is I actually clip their bum bum with a little uh, clipper thing, just like this. And you can see that their bum bums are foo-foo and fuzzy, and I mean, she's super clean. So, um, I know I'm showing all your business, huh? Ah! So, but I would um, just shave the area um, just so that, you know, nothing sticks to her um, if she were going to a pet home. But again, she's not, so I'm not going to touch her or offer her in any way like that um, because she's a show baby. Yes, I say as a show baby. So, um, that is basically um, all you need to do in regards to um, grooming grooming them and um, I like to keep the bib oh, she's gonna let me she's so good this mom is so good um, I'm so happy I'll get to see her at shows because um, Nathan shows on the same circuit that I do so um, I'm really excited about that watching her how she does um, so that is that now when it comes to cages I mean, it's gonna be a per personal preference but I just find for this breed in particular um, wire is better um, just because they uh, do have the additional uh, little wool factors going on here um, and much to many people's um, misunderstanding uh, uh, rabbits have very padded feet um, so it's not like a dog or a cat where their pads are exposed and you know the wire is going to hurt them now having said that if they are sitting in a dirty cage or they ever, never ever ever get off the wire then of course that's going to pose a problem um, so litter box is fine or you have the tray underneath where everything falls through and you have like shavings in there um, you know so that they can be clean you can use a resting board um, they sell resting boards you know specifically for bunny cages or you could use a, a tile um, you know a, a piece of uh, garden lattice or just anything if you want to give them what's called a resting board which is fine as well um, you know I do use solid bottom cages here but they're in my nursery for the mummies and their babies so that they can um, uh, build nests and I don't have to worry about them using a nesting box or not using a nesting box and again that's a whole nother um, another thing uh, um, my kids and their daddy are playing in the background here my husband so you probably see them in the back playing ball um, I just noticed that when I was looking at the back of the camera so um, so anyway as you can see I mean that's basically it 
um, you know, you can take as much time. I mean, I could continue to groom her, but again, it's my own, you know, OCD, wanting every hair perfect, picture perfect uh, type thing. But she is absolutely fine. And she'll groom herself up beautifully, um, you know, herself. And um, so that's basically it. And again, once they reach the adult um, uh, fur or their adult um, uh, mane comes in, um, it's just a little bit of a different consistency. So it's not so um, snarl uh, likely. So again, um, when the question is, is it a lot of grooming? Um, that's, that's a question you have to ask yourself. What constitutes a lot of grooming uh, to you? Um, to me, no, I don't consider them to be a lot of grooming. Um, you know, it works great for me. Um, but again, I've watched my girlfriends um, getting their Angoras ready for show. And that is too much for me. Um, but again, you have other options, small bunny options. If you're looking for a little bunny, would be a Polish. Um, I, you know, they're great with kids. My sons both show them now, uh, my oldest son and my um, middle son. Holland Lops would be another one that might be an um, option for a smaller bunny that doesn't require a lot of grooming. Um, and uh, I've actually placed dwarf hoe totes with, um, with older children, um, probably like 10 and above, um, you know, and they also make a great little, great little pet. Um, I know some people like the mini rex now there's a breed though for example that sh probably they have to have a resting board i i re breed standard rex here they all have a resting board because their fur is so different um than a regular rabbit that um they actually can um get issues on their uh uh, what's called a hawk sore but it's not typical on a regular rabbit that's a specific breed um, and even um, the breeders do say though that if they're well bred that that doesn't happen um, I fortunately have not had any issues here um, but I do also provide them with resting boards look at her pose that is a proud proud poser right there that is how you know you have a show baby I mean she is just sitting ready um, I am so so excited to see her on the table and see how she does she is amazing. Hey, babies. Um, I probably should have kept her, but I can't keep them all, and I have more coming up, so hopefully we'll get a replica of her, um, but I'm very happy that she's got a great home to go to, and I'm going to actually see her little show career. So that is basically it. I'm not sure what else to cover. Um, so we talked about the food and the diet, and we talked about actually grooming them um, from a pet owner standpoint. Um, you know, don't, don't, um, hesitate you know to trim around the eye or trim around the bum area or if you if, if there's something that is a problem where you don't feel you're going to be able to keep up with it then give it a little trim it's a pet you know it's supposed to be for your enjoyment not for your stress at all so um uh take um i guess i'll close with that and if anybody else has any questions or concerns um please reach out to me i don't mind doing a quick little video at all um i enjoy doing them and i'm loving the feedback that i'm getting that it's actually helping um helping people uh you know with their lion heads um i love 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 this breed and i hope that more people um get to know it and love it as much as i do so um i'll put her back uh for now it's very very hot here today um so we got to get some iced bottles out on onto my herd here um we got a lot of litters with babies so we got to keep those mamas nice and cool and happy um so again youtube whispering pines micro farm or facebook whispering pines micro farm um you can find my videos and um, ask any questions or concerns um, there is no stupid question if you don't know the answer. Um, so have a great uh, summer, everybody, and I'm sure I'll be back soon.